You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Welcome, everyone, to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. And the very last one that we have to record in this 14 episode stretch before I leave on vacation. Well, there's good news out there. I'll be back soon. And these podcasts will probably have a little bit more energy. <laughs> but that's all I had to say. My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. And I think there's been pretty good energy, Paul. I think uh, I'm pretty proud of us. I'm proud of you. Hopefully, people have still enjoyed the podcast. And actually, when you're listening to this one, Paul is back in town, interestingly enough. Oh, really? Yes. And so, so you'll hear me tomorrow? Monday, I think this would be. Anyways, I'm not going to get uh, too specific here in case I screw it up. But Don't give my travel plans away. No, no, no that's right. <laughs> <laughs> this is episode number 427. Thank you for being with us. Hope that you are having a great week and you're living your dream drone life. Living the drone life is the way, that's the way that we live. That's the way that we want to live. The The passion in to, to profit, Rob, is that, is that how you say it? Uh, turn your passion into profit. That's right. There you Whew. go. Boom. <laughs> not having difficulty. No, not, not really. at all. Not at all. But let's get into today's question. Again, brought to you by Videoblox. If you use stock footage in any of the videos that you produce or create, you're going to want to check out Videoblox.com. One low annual rate to access all of their stock footage. Also, special thanks to Drone You and the community. If you want to get the best in-person flight training, Drone You. If you want the best not in-person flight training, <laughs> that's going to be Drone You as well. If you trust YouTube for everything, you may find yourself in a gutter with a $1,000 drone at the bottom of the gutter. Just saying. Check out thedroneyou.com because there are thousands of reasons to join, and I can't possibly mention all of them in any of the podcasts. Very good. We have a question. Hit me. It's a good question. And we're going to jump right into that question. Hey guys, this is Jason. I'm from North Carolina. Um, I've been watching y'all for the last three months. Y'all the reason why I went out and purchased the Phantom 3 Professional. Um, anyway, the question is that I have is, is the P3 Professional camera, is it as good as the Phantom 4's camera? Um, I just need to know. Um, I'm thinking about upgrading to the Phantom 4 or maybe the Inspire. Um, basically, I'm just starting my photography business and trying to figure out, is it worth stepping up to the Phantom 4 versus my Phantom 3 Professional? Thanks, guys, and keep up the good work. Hmm. Good question. It is a question. Uh, good question. I think there's a lot of people that were in that boat or are in that boat because there wasn't a huge time lapse, right, between the P3 Pro there, and the P4. There wasn't, no. And so that made it a really difficult decision when you just dumped 1500 bucks or whatever you did into the pro mm -hmm. and now you got a new one i mean that's the wave of that's the way technology works it's the wave of technology there, that's right Robert. that's right so um, what are your thoughts p4 camera is definitely better uh there one simple reason the glass is different on the p4 than it is the p3 what does that mean for you it means sharper images hmm. more detail uh in well, if you're taking big landscape aerials, you're going to see a lot more detail in your foreground, but also in the background as well. Um, you're going to get more space on the photo that you'll get an accurate picture. So you won't get this kind of nasty effect in the corner where you're losing and dropping pixels or it's not quite um, angled the right way. I'm trying to put it in layman's terms here. Um, but essentially with the Phantom 4, you're going to get more space on the sensor. You're going to get a better image. You're going to get better detail in the image. You're going to get more contrast in the image and you're going to get more dynamic range in the image. Now okay. he's asking the question, should I go for the P4? Should I go for the Inspire 1? My answer would say, how many days of the year do you need it to fly? Because hmm. it's going to come down to that for me, um, which if that's the case, I want to go practicality wise. I'm going to use the Inspire 1. Now that the Inspire 2 Mavic is out, there's a lot of other things that are, that are out now. Um, um, 
And the Inspire One is quite practical for the price. Sure. Now, if we use the Z3 and not the X3, but the Z3, that's the Z3, uh, you're going to see that same piece of glass on uh, on that camera. So right. highly recommend it. Highly, highly recommend it. Um, again, if you want to fly more days out of the year, Inspire One Z3, great setup for the money. There are more expensive, better options. Don't get me wrong. Better cameras, better everything but speaking practicality wise best for the money i think that's it that's a good all-around solution yeah what about the sensors as far as the p3 pro versus the p4 are they the same exact same they are the exact same okay Mm -hmm. so it's all about the glass it's all about the glass all right yeah cool it's all about those those glasses gotta have the good glass so you would recommend it sounds like go ahead and, and upgrade I would say Inspire 1, but you know, Just skip right over we're the P4. recording this before the Inspire 2 and all that stuff comes out, but if we're saying what's the best for the money, chances are that's still going to be the best for the money. So yeah. okay. anyway. All right. Well, Jason, thank you for being a listener. We really do appreciate that. Thank you for sending in a question. When you have more, go to astronew.com and send them in as well. We'll hop on those just as soon as we can. And uh, any last words, Paul? There's something I want to do. Um, I know this podcast is going to go out by the time I get back, but uh, I did call the FAA. I called the AMA and asked them to come on the show to really discuss the hobbyist versus commercial rules, uh, talking about FPV, the seek and avoid or see and avoid. Um, and I've got a statement here from the AMA. But I want to know your thoughts so we can play them on the show. So please, please send us uh, your thoughts on this. Do you think that hobbyist drone pilots or anyone who owns a drone should have to get a license? Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you think hobbyists should have to get the 107? Where do you think the line should be drawn? Uh, So let's think of it like this. If there's a guy on a beach, and you're on the beach too, and there's a lot of people around, and you see this guy flying around, and he's like, I'm a hobbyist guy, I don't need 107. What do you think about that? Yeah. What do you think about that scenario? I don't want to give you my opinion, because I want to hear yours. So go to askdroney.com and upload your opinion. Where does the line get drawn? Anyway, I think it's a really interesting topic. A lot of people are talking about it, mm-hmm. and uh, we want to we wanna get to the sources of both of these. Anyway, Absolutely. that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You.